In this video, I'm going to show you how to efficiently calculate the modified internal rate of return using a BA2 plus calculator. Now, here's the problem that we have at hand. We've got four years worth of cash flows, initial outflow of negative $1,500, 500, 700, then a negative cash flow in year three, and then a positive cash flow in year four. In a situation like this, there is uh, potentially two different internal rates of return and therefore internal rate of return is not a good measure of rate of return for this type of projects. And so instead what we do is we make an assumption <clears throat> about what the intermediate cash flows will be invested at. So 500, 700, those intermediate cash flows will get reinvested at within the company and let's assume 12% is the rate of return that they're going to be reinvested at. This negative 150, 150, negative $150 is going to be financed at some rate within the company. Let's assume that its financing rate is 6%. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the performance of this project under these situations. So the performance of this project is what happens to this $500 if it grows at 12% up to year four? What happens to the $700 if it grows at 12% up to year four? And we're going to include the present value of this $150 at the financing rate here as a time zero cash flow. So we're going to look at future value of the $500, future value of the $700, add it to that $900 for a terminal value, and then we're going to take the present value of any negative cash flows and lump them all at time zero. Now, just so that you know where we're going, the future value of 500 and the 700 and the 900 is 2480.54. That's the 500 compounded three times, one, two, three, at 12%. The 700 compounded one, two, twice at 12%. And then the 900 doesn't get compounded at all because, well, it doesn't get compounded at all because it's uh, not, uh, it's, it's only received at the last end. You can see where these formulas are connecting. Uh, the present value of this 150, that gets loaded back into the cash flow at year zero, and total of that is 1625, and you can see what those calculations are here on, the, on, on Excel. Now, we're going to do this efficiently on a BA2+, but I wanted to show you where we're going. Once we have this converted timeline, which consists of the present value of 150 and the negative 1500 here, that total is negative 1626 at time zero. We do away with all of the intermediate cash flows, and then we just look at the terminal value. That's the future value of the 500, the 700, and the 900 at 12%. And then we find the rate of return on that investment. And that can be done uh, any number of different ways. We can use the uh, algebraic function, which I've done here, you know, just by taking the fourth root of uh, 2480 divided by 1625 and subtracting one. Uh, we can use the rate function, which is what we're going to do in the BA2+, plus, setting the present value to negative 1626 and the future value to 2480 and the number of periods to be four. Uh, or in Excel, we can't do this on the calculator, but in Excel there's actually a function, the MIRR function, which will do this for you. All right, so let's now do this on the financial calculator. So what we want to do first is we want to find the present value of all of the negative cash flows, the present value of all of the out, outflows. And it turns out there's only one in addition to the time zero one. So we want 150 and I'm going to make it a negative sign because it's negative. And I'm going to divide it by, I want the present value back one, two, three periods. And so I'm going to divide it by, uh, let's see, what's our discount rate? Financing rate is 6%, so 1.06. And I need to do that, raise that to the third power, one, two, three, to get back. All right, so that's negative 125.94, and I want to subtract from that the 1500. And so that's what gives me the negative 1625.94, and I'm going to save that, store it in unit one, so in memory slot one. So that's going to be the 1626 over here. I've stored it in one. Now the second thing we need to do is look at the future value of these 
three cash flows. Of course, the $900 doesn't get compounded, but we'll start off with the 500. The $500 gets compounded one, two, three periods, and so we're going to have 500 times, and the reinvestment rate is 12%, so 1.12 raised to the third power, that's how, we're, how many we're doing, uh, is equal to, and we want to add to that <coughs> 700 times 1.12 raised to the 1, 2 power, and then we want to add 900 to that, and that gives me 2480.54, which is the 2480.54. I'm going to store it here just so that I have it uh, safely. And now I'm just going to use the, I'll just use the i slash y function to find out what that rate is. And so my um, number of periods, I'll use these time value money calculations. So the number of periods is four. So four is in. Uh, the present value is this negative 1625 that I pull out of memory slot one. That's going to be my present value. My future value is going to be, I'm going to uh, pull out my future value that's in slot two, uh, and I'm going to put that as the future value. And the payment is going to be zero. And now I want to compute interest rate, and that's 11.13%. That's what we get over here, 11.13%, 11.13% as well. So that's the way to do the calculation. Another way to do the calculation, if you want to use algebra, is uh, do the ratio of the end value to the beginning value. So uh, 2, that's 2480, uh, divided by what's in slot 1, 16, uh, 1625. That's 1.52, and I need to make it into a positive number. So 1.525, I turned it into a positive number by hitting this uh, plus minus button. And I want to raise that to the 1 fourth power. I'm going to take the fourth root of this, and then I'm going to subtract off 1. So I'm going to raise that to the 0.25, that's 1 fourth power. And if I subtract off 1, I get... 11.137%, which again is the same answer, 11.137% either way you do the problem. Now one thing to note is as you are doing your calculations, I'll just make sure that uh, you know how my calculator is set. I have my calculator set for algebraic operating system so that when I'm doing adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing, it's doing it in the orders that I think it ought to do, which is exponentiation first, then multiplication, and then adding. If you try to run through these calculations that I just did on your calculator, and you're not getting, for example, the 248054 that I got, then it's probably the case that your calculator is not set to AOS. It's set to, well, let's go ahead and show you how to change that. Second, uh, if I do second set, that's going to change it to chain, which is a different order of operations than AOS. I always make sure mine is set to AOS. Uh, and doing the calculations of the way that we did it, uh, you need it set that way as well.